Hello. What I'm going to be doing today is replacing a tweeter diaphragm in a Tenoy driver, a two-way 12-inch that came out of a I-12 cabinet. This particular one appears to be made in 2000. Um, got some very good markings here. And same with the tweeter portion of it. Now one thing I want to get clear from the beginning, um, I didn't find any real good directions on how to do this. The main thing is cleaning and replacing the diaphragm in the tweeter portion which includes ferrofluid. This is my opinion so treat it as such and thanks for watching. When I pulled this from the cabinet I marked all of my wires which one went to the woofer, which pair went to the tweeter, which one was plus, which one was minus, and even marked here on the driver itself on the magnet where the positive terminal is on the diaphragm. I've now removed all three of my retainer screws and that allows you to lift this off and expose the diaphragm itself. When you pull the diaphragm off the magnet may take a little prying. Um, you want to notice that there is a gasket, a foam gasket that will have to be removed and placed on the new diaphragm. Also, just a quick check, it appears that most of my ferrofluid is gone. I'm going to have to clean this and I'll show you how I do it here in a minute. Inspecting the old voice call, it's obvious we have some burn marks in the windings. Now, one of the things I read about the ferrofluid is after 10-15 years it tends to dry and become glue like. Now this speaker being manufactured in 2000 um, I'm not sure if that's as much the case here as this speaker was probably run very hard and the amount of heat over the years being dissipated by the oil finally broke it down so one of the other um, it's a good thing that Tenoy sends a syringe of ferrofluid along with a new diaphragm. So I took a post-it note folded it over and then ran it in the groove where the voice call sits. It's sort of hard to do this and hold the camera at the same time but I just rotate that around there and I may do this a dozen times just to get any and all old residue out of there. This is the kind of thing you're going to see the first time. This one has a heck of a lot more than the last one. I don't know how broken down it is and I have enough to redo this again from scratch. So I'm going to clean all that up. And here's number two. And here's number three. Now some people even use like masking tape fold it over so the sticky side's out. Um, that's more for a true air coil instead of one with fair fluid in it. Although once I get all this cleaned out it may not be a bad idea. And this is probably good enough for right now and now I'm going to use a little 
the lacquer thinner on a clean one. So I got some lacquer thinner here and I'm just gonna get just a tad on my piece of paper. Now it evaporates extremely fast so I'm gonna run this around in my groove and that's gonna take care of any burnt or solidified ferrofluid that may be left in there. After the paper with the lacquer thinner on it, let it set a couple minutes and I'm going to do a little bit of air. Just to make sure any lacquer thinner has evaporated. Like I said earlier, Tanoi sends a syringe of ferrofluid along with the new diaphragm. So as far as the syringe of ferrofluid, you got two choices. You can either use a Dremel with a very small drill on it and drill the cap so that you can just use it to put that ferrofluid in the slot there. Now that, that does work. It just makes me a little nervous. The other thing you can do is go get a large needle at your local pharmacy um, that will fit right on this guy. Take the cap off, put the needle on. And there you go. Looks like I got a little bit of clean up there, but not much. So on your new frame you want to pull the sticker off there and replace the one that's on there so it gives a date. Take the old gasket and fit it on the new diaphragm. Line it up and drop it in place very carefully. It does require an initial amount of pressure. Those lineup pins are very tight and that's a good thing because it's hard to mess up your voice coil. Drop your high frequency driver back into the woofer driver and secure it again with your three screws. Now just to check my work, I don't know if this is necessary at this point because there's not a whole lot you can do about it, but I hook it up to a small tone generator. just to make sure it works. I also check the voice call resistance with an ohmmeter and it should be right around 4.5, 4.6 and now it's time to put the whole thing back in the cabinet hooking it up to the correct wires paying attention to phase and you should be good to go again this is all my opinion on how to do this. I did indeed use the entire syringe full of ferrofluid. It was awfully nice at Tanoi to give us new ferrofluid and I would guess that they're giving us exactly what was needed for this driver.